And that's how I knew that they were, I mean, I already knew I was going to get voted off probably, but just the way they did it was attacking my skill level as opposed to just being like, eh, you know, they could have done it a different way in my opinion. But anyway, uh, yeah, those shows are, uh, you know, they know exactly who they already want to win. And they're just kind of going through the motions of leading everybody to that, to that uh, conclusion. Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes and have here Mr. Rudy Campos. Hello, and, uh, hello. How are you today, sir? Uh, doing great. Uh, just been running around, working, and then uh, here I am. Well, Rudy, he does uh, body painting, the uh, prosthetics, all that kind of cool stuff. I'm, I, I don't know, is it kind of like cosplay? Um, I'm a, I'm a makeup, you know what, like over the, I use, I'm just a, an artist. Uh, that's the easiest way of putting it. Uh, cause I do so many things now that having just one title to it, like then people just associate me with that one thing. But, uh, as an artist, I do makeup effects, body painting, photography, and I also, uh, am a content creator online and I design and produce uh, adult toys. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get into how you got into that. So, uh, yeah, you know, as much as I hate talking about it, the, the whole COVID and lockdown thing affected so many people. And, of course, you weren't immune to that. Uh, but no. you, you had to be a little creative to keep things going. So tell us what uh, so you did. Super creative. So my industry is I'm in the event entertainment industry. And during, uh, I think it was m end of February, middle of March, we went into lockdown and I had just come back from DC from a trip. So my agents told me that I was just going to be, Oh, you know, people are rescheduling. They're really scared of this, this Corona thing, but we'll probably be working pretty soon. Uh, but we went into lockdown and I lost a year and a half worth of contracts and I didn't, the event industry never came back a hundred percent for me as a makeup artist. And I had to figure out, I didn't get unemployment during 2020. So I had to, and my savings was pretty much at the very end of it. So I had to figure out what to do. So I already had an adult content series that I'd started in 20, the end of 2018 uh, as kind of a passion project to have more mature body paint uh, content, very reminiscent of uh, a couple of Japanese artists that I enjoyed as a kid and uh, heavy metal magazine and like heavy metal, the movie. Uh, but so I turned that adult content then throughout 2020 progressively, progressively got more adults. So it went from the occasional uh, every like four, every like, I don't know, after every every three sets, there'd be like maybe one that like had porn in it until eventually it became like every single set had porn in it. And maybe after every like 10, there'd be one that was just like a centerfold picture uh, set. And then from that came about, uh, I originally, before COVID, I had been playing around with the idea of starting, um, since I have a background in special effects, I was going to produce my own toy line for the models to use in their videos so that way everything could be done in-house and I wouldn't be out, we'll say, 150 bucks every time a model needed a toy. I could then just be like, oh, cool, what colors you like? And then I would just be out... Once the mold and everything was made, I would only be out the initial product of making the toy. Um, that went into storage. And then during 2020, during lockdown, everybody was doing live streams for entertainment. So I did one night, did one about making dildos and everyone liked it. People responded to it and then were asking if I sold them. And at first I was like, no, that's weird. Why would I sell them? No, I'm not. I'm not set up for that. Nah, this is <laughs> no. And that was it. And and now I'm just a poor, struggling artist like everyone else. <laughs> and they're not your average uh, phallic friend either. They're kind of like space age looking stuff. Yeah. So they're they're all fantasy, fantasy dildos. And 
There's a skull one. There's a robot one. There's a troll one. There's a tentacle. There's a sandworm from Beetlejuice. Um, <laughs> and there's, oh, there's a bat. And then recently we have a new design that has, like, it's a stack of four skulls or four or five skulls going up. Um, and then hopefully uh, this year there'll be more designs coming out. How do you get into an industry like that? Was it just something you just one day said, hey, I, I want to do this? Did you kind of fall into it? Did someone encourage you? For makeup? Just or for, for makeup and all that. So for makeup, I was always into special effects and monsters growing up. And I loved watching uh, back, back, uh, back in, I guess, the 90s there was a show called Movie Magic on the Discovery Channel. And then um, there was another one called Next Step. That one was more on technology, but uh, Movie Magic, I don't even remember how many episodes it has. You can find them on YouTube now. Um, but they would show behind the scenes of movies and special effects and how they do the prosthetics and things like that. So back then I would, anytime I could find something about uh, movie monsters and how they're made or, you know, on a lot of DVD commentaries back then uh, towards the, towards the end of the nineties and early two thousands, this, the, there'd be special features on the DVDs that had that. Uh, and before that, it was just, you know, if you could find it on television or if you could find the, I would say in the nineties, it was rare to find a book that had pictures and special that would talk about special effects in terms of how it was applied and how it was made. Uh, I did find one, my father found, found me one book when he was out and about. It was like movie monster, like it was like makeup yeah. artists, movie monsters and something or other. But it was a really cool like history of some of the movies and how, uh, you know, the, the makeup artists created these looks. And then in the middle of the book back then, you know, you'd have your five color pages that had color pictures in them. Uh, but that was a really good book. And then after that, uh, I decided uh, not, I went to college for a little while, but it decided after, for me, after high school, it just wasn't for me to continue that sort of education. Um, I think me as a person, I would have needed to have matured a couple of years to go to college. But my dad said I had to do something with my life. Uh, so he found me a makeup school that taught special effects and our makeup effects and sent me to that and and yeah and then been doing that ever since wow and your talents got you on a tv show right yeah so uh in 2015 i was on a show called skin wars it was on the game show network i believe right now you can find it on netflix um if not you can find clips of it on youtube and what it is, it's very much like a sci-fi space off, but it's strictly body paint. So all the, everything is about creating artwork on the body, very little to do with like special effect, makeup effects, like prosthetics or anything like that. It's all creating artwork on the skin. Yeah. I was very disappointed when you didn't win, but I, yeah, I told the producer to go F themselves in the back, in the background. <laughs> That's why they voted me off. Like those shows are so those shows, let me tell you, after I was on one of those shows coming back and then watching the news or watching any sort of reality show, it's all fake. It's all fake. And that's why like sometimes I don't even trust the news because I'm like, no, man, that's edited. Um, but yeah, what happened was I knew I was going into a reality show and it's all fake, but I didn't understand how fake it was until I got there. And a producer, they saw me, my friend had just been voted off. And I was like, no, that dude's talented. Why'd you vote him off? He was voted off, not because of his skills, but because they tried to, he, prior to being on the show, he had his lawyer look over the contract and then send a revised contract to the show. So then right before the first episode, or right when we're about to start shooting, they came in, they acted like they lost the contract and that everyone had to re-sign their contracts or or that they lost his contract and he re-sign it. But he said no without his lawyer present. He was the smartest one. And because what was trying what, what they were trying to do was trying to switch it back to the original unrevised contract. 
So I have a feeling because after that, he was gone. He was voted off first. And then I was upset about that because that showed me how they are on these shows. And I was sulking in a corner, kind of being really pissed off and just like thinking. And a producer was like, high energy, everybody, high energy. I see you over there sulking in the corner and really loud in front of everybody. I just said, you can go F yourself. And like you could hear a pin drop. And the next day I was voted off. Of course. Yeah, of course. Um, But then, uh, and then I was there to compete. I didn't really give them my personality. Like, I love having fun and joking around. But if I'm in, back then I was very much, if I'm competing, I'm competing. Now, if I'm competing, I'm like, meh, I'd rather have fun than just be all serious. Uh, So I was, I didn't, they didn't see really much of my personality. And that's what they wanted me to show. But if they'd said that and said, hey, look, you're not going to win and we're going to vote you off in like four or five episodes, I'd have been like, cool, you're straight with me. Then I'll have a lot of fun. Pressure's off not to compete. And they could have done it that way. But, you know, whatever. Um, But at the end, during my walk of shame, where you have to like put everything in your bag and be all sad, I was really sarcastic. And I'd open my bag and I dumped everything in there instead of putting it... And then they were like, can you do that again? I'm like, sure. And then I lined everything up at the edge of the table and started flicking it into the case. And they didn't use any of that during <laughs> the um, during the show. And then, you know, when you're like saying goodbye to everybody, oh my goodness, I'm going to miss you guys. Do better than I did. Like I started patting my jacket and then all my friends are like, did you forget something? And I go, oh no, 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 here it is. And I go, and I flipped them off and they didn't use that either. And then like when they're walking me back to like the car to like go to the hotel to, you know, be sent home, they go, yo, or not the hotel, the house to get my stuff to then go to a hotel. They go, why weren't you like that on, on the, on the show? And I was like, oh, why weren't, because I think what they were trying to do is peg me as the bad guy. And I go, well, I'm not going to be a dick to these people. They're the, my competitors aren't being jerks to me. You guys are being jerks to me. Uh, but when they asked me, like, why wasn't that, like, more personality on the show, I was like, oh, well, once I was voted off, I wasn't here to compete, so my personality was going to come out. If you guys had just told me you're voting me off in, like, however many episodes you want me on, I totally would have just given you everything. <laughs> I don't think people realize how much the reality is not really part of these shows. No, no, absolutely not, because they set, like, they set up they knew how they wanted me to vote it off and I caught it. And like, they, it was just underhanded. Like in one of the scenes, you had to take a picture of your artwork and what you painted had to line up with the background. And I remembered how I placed the camera to shoot the picture. And then the picture that came up on the vote when we were voted off was a completely different angle. And that's how I knew that they were I mean, I already knew I was going to get voted off probably, but just the way they did it was attacking my skill level as opposed to just being like, eh, you know, they could have done it a different way in my opinion. But anyway, uh, yeah, those shows are, uh, you know, they know exactly who they already want to win and they're just kind of going through the motions of leading everybody to that, to that uh, conclusion. My buddy Brad got a TV show. And we were doing the pilot. I got to be a part of it. I'm one of the background characters. I don't know. I guess you'd consider me the Chumley or something. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, we're doing this. And the whole time, the director is telling us to, to basically play it straight. You know, be serious, all that kind of stuff. All right. And knowing me and Brad and some of the other guys that were there, we all joke around. That's our personality. So you're asking us to go against our personality. And about the middle of shooting all this stuff, I looked at Brad and I said, man, this is not going to work, man. They're not letting us be us. And, you know, after all that was done, they send it off to get edited. That was, I think, like another six or seven months, maybe even a little longer just for them to tell us that they turned us down. They're not going to do the show after all. Yeah. And 
and they don't even let you see the footage. Yeah. So I'm like, this is a bunch of bull crap. And we walked into the same door, I bet you 12 times, drove into the parking lot, I don't know, six or seven times, uh, went to this counter. Okay, our the premise of the show, we were building bars for people, and we had built this six-foot-tall football helmet that was going to be a margarita machine or whatever. And we had to uh, had to purchase these Houston Texans, uh, the, the the logo to put on the side of it. So they we went to go pick it up, walk in the door, like I say, I don't know how however many times, go up to the counter. They hand us the stickers. I'm looking at it. The other guy that's with me, he's supposed to sign the paperwork and pay and all that kind of stuff. And I'm looking at the stickers and I said, dude, they're both facing the same direction. I said, they're supposed to be facing opposite directions. So when you put it on the other side of the helmet, they will actually be facing the same direction. Yeah. And the, oh, they love that part of it. They had us redo that scene. I can't tell you how many freaking times. I don't, anyway, they wanted us to get into an argument about it and like we were pissed off at each other and all this stuff. And I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. So you kind of get the idea of what the hell those shows are really about, you know? Yeah. You get the idea. I mean, you were there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's, I mean, if uh, like, after the show, I did the show, and even while it was on, I didn't really like. I think I promoted the first episode, but then it was on the Game Show Network, so not a lot of my friends had it, so they didn't see it. It was only until it hit Netflix that people started recognizing me, and I here and there I get recognized. Um, but it's it was a great concept for a show. Um, after doing it, would I do another one? Of course, but I, of course now I know how how to do it. Um, I feel it's one of those things that like, uh, I feel if you're pretty straight with me and just say, Hey, you're not here to win. You're here to just entertain. I'd have been like, okay, okay now. But if you're saying, no, no, it's a competition. You're here to compete. I'm, I'm going to compete. Um, but yeah, would I do it all over again? Yeah. Uh, like would I have done it different? Of course. Um, would I've been more of an asshole to fit their narrative of course like if they had just said you're gonna get voted off in like 10 episodes then i would have been like you want me to be the villain you got it and out of twirled my mustache and like cut people's airline hoses or like broken brushes and that probably would have kept me on for a lot longer but if they just said can you play it up i would have been like you got it well i watch all those baking competitions and they always got those ones on there that you're like God, I just want to grab them and smack them and just can't stand this person. And the reason you come back is you're just, you can't wait for that person to get voted off. And when they keep yes. coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back, you just get more into the show. Like, hurry up, and get rid of this person. I can't stand them. And I like so and so over there. That's the person that should win. <laughs> and that's, and yeah, and, and very much the, and the, the way they edit people sometimes, they edit them to look like the bad guy and they might not be the bad guy. Um, I think in our cast for season two, everyone was edited. I think, I mean, a couple people were edited and it didn't change their personality. You want, because they wanted the show to like them. Um, I think they were trying to edit me to be an asshole. And I'm like, well, yeah, if you're an asshole to me, I'll be an asshole to you, but I'm not going to be that way to these competitors that aren't being that way to me. Um, so I think they pegged the wrong thing for me. And then, but then one person in our cast, they, they were just, they just rubbed you the wrong way. So then when you mm. saw them on the show, when the show came on, I was like, no, nah, that's them. They didn't do any editing. They just, they, <laughs> nope, that is them. They're total ass hat. So uh, yeah, then there's, you know, the occasional person that you're just like, nope, they're that nasty. They're that condescending and, so I was just like, yeah, no, that's them. No editing required. <laughs> oh, my friend Crystal, I think you know her, Crystal Star. Yes. Yeah, she was on the Lego Masters or whatever. Yeah. 
And when she got voted off, I just, I was like, no, that's it. I'm not watching this crap no more. And uh, I even sent him a message. So that's like, that's a bunch of bull. You kicked her off. I ain't watching your stupid show no more. And they tried to be, you know, nice about it and like, oh, but we're, we're here for all the competitors. And I'm like, don't give me that crap. She was better than what you had up there. And yeah, they, 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 <laughs> they know exactly who they want to win and how far they want people to go. So sometimes it doesn't work out in their favor, but other times it does. Most of the time it does. <laughs> So what um what do you got going now? Uh now well the event industry I think like for myself here in Texas the event industry did not bounce back for me. Um people didn't have events anymore for a long time and when events started coming back they started cutting corners and when it comes to events you're going to cut corners of things that you don't think you need. So Makeup and special effects were the first thing because then a lot of companies, a lot of the entertainment companies that I work for then started just going, well, let's just have the performers do their own makeup or no makeup at all. We'll just put them in costumes and masks. So I stuck with, um, so, I mean, occasionally I get uh, the, uh, a gig here and there doing a corporate event and doing somebody makeup. I actually have one tomorrow or no Saturday, um, in two days. I hope I got to look at my calendar. <laughs> Um, but I stuck with, uh, creating the adult toys, um, creating a, a continuing with adult content and commissions for clients that need costumes, whether it be a cosplayer or someone just needing a random costume. Um, and then I have an online store and I sell prosthetics, makeup, prosthetics, monster, uh, accessories and with all those things combined, they've been helping me, you know, get recover from, uh, from 2020, which is, it's, it's really weird to say that because now it just seems so far away, but the lasting effects, uh, for, for artists is, is a long-term thing. Um, I don't think if locked up, if, 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 if the pandemic had never happened, if corona, the coronavirus had never happened, I would still be doing corporate events more full time like I was because that was probably 80 to 85 percent of my income. And that's where I would have been. And I would have continued, you know, on that path with the occasional adult content sprinkled in there, you know, still doing it as kind of a as a hobby, but I probably would not have gotten into the toys as much as I have uh, had to or fell into it and then been like, okay, this is where more income will come from. Um, but it's the long-term effects of that for me is I've had to pivot and I've had to start all over again where, you know, granted I, I'm bringing my name and reputation when it comes to like the body painting, which is cool, but I have to start almost from scratch of at the bottom of the totem pole, like mm -hmm. where body painting and corporate events, I would worked 10 years to get up high enough that it was 80% of my income. Um, now I'm at the bottom of the adult content industry trying to make a niche uh, idea bring in more people and then with the toys um again I'm, I'm starting at the very bottom learning the industry learning what people want and networking and it's 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 tough because as an artist when you've established yourself in one industry and you're like cool i'm this is where i'm going to be at and you get knocked off your high horse and you have to start all over again it it's it it humbles you and then you realize that like, uh, you know, nothing's permanent. And you're also grateful for like, that you can be creative enough to reinvent yourself and start something new. Um, like currently I, I've got the, the monster girls and the toy project going on at the same time. But in the last, I think at the end of 2022, people's people have, are spending less on things that they may not need mm -hmm. uh, with little spikes here and there. 
So I saw a big hit in the sale of the toys, but that hasn't deterred me because it's something that I can see in the long term. Like unless the world ends and we're in a, I don't know, like apocalyptic movie where silicone isn't anywhere around for me to use, uh, toy, you know, toys like that will always be a commodity people will buy. Um, especially now that people are accepting more creative ones. There's a lot of mom and pops companies uh, starting out and they're coming out with these amazing designs and it takes them a little while to get established. And I think this is only my second, third year doing the toys. So that's barely anything. And I've seen one, I think uh, last year, or the year before it was a, one of the uh, during Halloween, I, I released the TikTok videos eight seconds long and I was just releasing it. It was a toy video it was just and went spooky, scary skeletons is the background. And from that one eight second video, the next week, my sales shot up and I sold a year's worth of, in, of, 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 of toys or more so in one week. Wow. And, it, and it took me a month to be able to get all of them out there or shipped out. But it showed me the potential that some of these other mom and pops companies have once they're established and what kind of income they're bringing in. Um, so that's why I wanted to stick with it. It's And yeah. it's also something – it's something – and I, I'm just going to stick with it because I feel like it is something that people do buy. Um, and it's also something that – you know, once I'm 70, 80, I don't want to body paint. I don't want to do photo shoots. Um, but having a company where there's a physical product and I might design it or hire someone to design it and eventually have other people making them and shipping them for me, that would be better than, um, or that would be best for me when I'm in my 80s. Right. Do you think that the industry is going to make a comeback or is this kind of the wave of the future? For the event industry? Yeah. I think the event industry has made a comeback, but not here in, and in, in, like I'm based in Houston right. and I feel that a lot of the companies, the entertainment companies that are out here, there aren't any newer ones that I'm seeing pop up um, or you are seeing newer ones here and there, but they don't last very long. Um, it takes a very special type of person to be an agent and the owner of an entertainment company. And the three or four major entertainment companies that are here that I've worked with, the owners of the companies are all getting to a point that they're, they're all ready to retire and travel and, maybe start something else or sell their businesses that I feel that when it comes to the event entertainment currently in Houston, a lot of these companies are in their, their downward, they're ready. Like the people that started these companies are ready to, to go. And that means that it's just about pumping out entertainment Performers and costumes, performers and costumes, pick it up, go, pick it up, go. So the the deep, the little small details of it, like hair and makeup or a makeup artist or a makeup effects artist or body painter, you know, why hire someone and spend money or why does the client want to spend that money when you can just have the performers do their own hair, do their own makeup, do their own body paint or special effects? It's not going to look good, as good, but not everyone knows what good makeup looks like unless they are a very particular client. That's like, no, we want it to look this way. I mean, I've worked comic cons and I see some of the people come in, some of the, the makeup and special prosthetics and everything they make. Some of them are remarkable. Yes. I'm not going to lie, but then there's some you're like, well, I guess if you think it looks good. <laughs> yes, correct. Correct. <laughs> but um I mean there's gonna be some that want professional looking stuff and not everybody can do that. No. Um, and that's like for corporate events, I think 
maybe the industry will come back uh, one day, but by then, will I want to be a part of it? Of course, I love money, but um, I don't know when that will happen. And by that time I might be older and not want to do it, or there'll be somebody in their twenties that will do it for next to nothing. Um, but when it comes to like the comic book or like comic cons and anime conventions, I have switched over to less comic cons. A lot of comic cons are very family friendly, which mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that, but anime conventions a lot of the ones that I attend have a little bit more of an adult atmosphere, even though, which is, which is odd, I think, because at a Comic-Con, I noticed that the age is all around. You, mm -hmm. It's a wide spectrum. Right. When it comes to anime conventions, depending on the anime convention, sure, it's all spectrums, but it's a younger demographic but they are more accepting to adult content creators, adult products. Um, so that's why I've switched over more to the anime conventions because, you know, some anime conventions have a 18 plus section where people can sell their artwork that's 18 plus. Some anime conventions are strictly 18 plus. And there's one coming up uh, that I'll be attending and that's good for me. And there are a lot of, um, larger anime conventions that have 18 plus only panels where they're discussing whether it be a topic on adult content or adult anime or they're showing adult anime or something or maybe the the presenters like i i drop a lot of f-bombs can't have kids there they have people up at the door checking ids and it does well like so i feel like that is that industry will i will be there for a while a little longer um, I'm giving myself probably like, I, I joke around my friends going, dude, once I hit 40, I'm, they're going to retire me out to the Renaissance festival because they won't be like, Oh, sir, you're too old to be at this anime convention only for younger folks. I hear that the Renaissance festival is open to everyone and that's <laughs> where they retire me. Um, but I think if I can, uh, if I have a good product and an entertaining panel, I should be able to stay at the anime conventions for a little while longer before they go. No, sir. You're gonna have to leave. <laughs> I'd have no chance. I'm 52, so. Jeez, man. Thanks. Get, You're welcome. Uh, let, let me ask you something, and I, I'm I don't want to sound political here whatsoever, but there's been a kind of a switch in the like people that like DC, Marvel, all those kind of comics that have been around for years. Okay, they've they've changed. The, the the characters the storylines where it's more messaging than it is a story anymore and i've noticed that people are gravitating to the anime because the anime is entertaining it's it's story based it's not about sending out all these messages do you think that's why people are kind of more towards the anime so my opinion i don't watch a lot of anime but the anime that i do watch is entertaining it's it's I, I never watched like I don't think I've sat down and watched an anime and walked away and was like, whoa, I just stopped watching that because their their ideology was a little too strong for me. Um, but it's it's funny. Because. The community and culture. In the anime communities, like I said, it's of all ages, but it's a, it is a younger demographic especially I guess in the groups or communities that I hang out with or I have to network within because of the models that I work with or other content creators that hire me to make props and costumes for them. You know, I'm noticing that I'm also trying not to be political here, but it is. <laughs> it's it is difficult. Certain, it's difficult it not to be. Age, it's a certain age demographic. I feel from early teens to about mid twenties, um, whatever the culture is at the moment is, is what, what the larger group or not the larger group in the whole, but many pockets of it, that's, they're going to, they're going to be about 
their ideology and their messages and what they're trying to convey to either an older generation or a younger generation. And like I myself, I'm stuck in, I'm in my late thirties, but because I am in these groups of younger creators, um, I, I see this. It's interesting because I, I'm sure every generation goes through it where you're looking at a younger generation and what the the messages that they're trying to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, you know, by the time that you're my age, those messages that you're trying to convey will have changed so dramatically that doesn't matter what you will eventually be outdated and no longer uh, in tune with, with what the current message is. And it's just, it's interesting to just kind of, I guess, step back and watch that happen. And I'm just like, eh. Um, but sorry, that was a tangent. I feel that, <laughs> yes, uh, that was, sorry. I was like, it's something that I am a strongly, I, I strongly believe and I should talk about it, but at the same time, walk on eggshells about it. Um, I can't get canceled. I love money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I totally understand, man. But I, I get where you're coming from. And the thing is, is like, um, for instance, like the animes that I watch are super entertaining. They're hilarious. Like I watched one, I bought a subscription of service so I could just watch this one anime. And I was like, let me see what everyone's talking about. And I thought I'm going to watch one episode and then skedaddle. I ended up binging half of the series because it was just hilarious and well-written and super just, it was, but you know, when it comes to comic books, um, How do I put this out there? Oh, here we go. So I feel like doesn't matter what animes you've watched and like what timeline. I think if you've been watching animes from, I would say the 80s, 90s up until um, current, there are, I feel that animes are a little bit more progressive with certain concepts and certain lifestyles. And they have been put in there early enough that anyone that was into anime or watched anime, 80s, 90s, and on, you're not really, you're there for entertainment because you you kind of already understand what they're they're saying. They're, 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 not, they're not shoving it down your throat. It's right. just like, they're just like, okay, this character is this way. That's who they are. And then you don't think anything of it. You're like, oh, oh, okay, cool. And they're a great character. But it's not, it's not shoved in any way. Um, and uh, because I, I remember watching a, a couple of animes um, in, in Mexico um, and as a kid, and there would be characters on those series that you're like, they'd be like, they were very feminine uh, characters and they looked female, but they were like, no, that, that is a male character. And you're like, oh, but it, in the storyline of things that never got in the way of anything in the story. It was just like, Oh, that's a male character or, Oh, that's a very masculine female character. And it, it had nothing. It, it, they just like, Oh, okay. That's who they are. And then, then the story. And you're like, the story is amazing. But I feel like with, I guess, Western uh, audiences, when it comes to DC Marvel or the like, I do feel that I haven't picked up as many comic books as I used to because I have to pay my bills now. No. Uh -huh. But the ones that I have, I feel that the Western, I feel like Western comic book, the Western comic book companies are trying to, I don't think they're genuinely trying to write in a way that and I'm talking about the bigger companies not like small indie companies where you're like something that's may not be at every comic book store it might be a special order but the big companies I don't feel like that they're writing in a genuine way to represent any sort of ideology or any sort of walk of life there it's a cash grab for them and excuse me congestion 
it's a, a cash grab for them. And I feel that they are then going over the top, trying to reiterate whatever message that they're trying to get, you know, put out there and shove down people's throats that people are just like, uh, this has nothing to do with this specific storyline or it's out of left field or, and it's just, I feel like it's done in a way that it's just, and it's a cash grab because they're trying to, um, have everyone buy their comic books. And then when they do that, what ends up happening is, and I've seen these podcasts online, uh, people get very toxic. And then when they get very toxic, it just kind of like, it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. Like I've, I've watched a couple of podcasts on, on YouTube where they were talking about a certain comic book or something. I was like, Oh, you know what? Let me catch up on what, what, what the latest things are out there. And then these guys will open their mouths and they're very misogynistic or very close minded. And I'm not saying that the entire Western geek community is like that, but those pockets there um, leave a bad taste. And then it just, it makes it almost like not wanting to pick up a Western comic book from a big company because they're either, I feel like they're trying too hard. It's at the end of the day, it's a cash grab. Yeah. Well, you have those of us who are just kind of in the middle about everything. Yeah. And we just want a good story. I, 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 I don't want to shove anything down anybody's throat whatsoever. Um, but it seems like people feel like they have to nowadays. Why can't we just have a good story? And, you know, I've, I've read books. You've had characters like, you know, like in DC, you got Mr. Terrific. Okay. It's no Mr. Terrific is gay. Yeah. He's a black guy, but he's got this high intelligence and he, creates all these cool gadgets and you know has he goes out there and he fights crime right yeah nobody cared that he was gay <laughs> yeah nobody cared that he was black we just cared that he was a good character yeah you know um and that's all we want and and that's i i feel like that that is um yeah it's i feel like that bigger companies are trying way too hard to get money from everyone that they are doing a lot. Like I, myself, I'm, I'm Hispanic. I'm from Mexico, but never once have I watched a television show or read a comic book. You want me to keep going? Yeah. Keep going. Uh, I've never read a comic book or watched a television show and looked at it and gone, Oh, no, there's no one out there like me. No one's representing me. No, like that's not how I'm thinking. I'm just going, wow, that's a, it's a superhero. It's a, it's a, or it's a great story or it's a great science fiction show. I'm not looking for someone that looks like me or it just, that's something that's not coming in the forefront of me for me as a, as someone from another country and I don't know, it, it's just, it's just a weird thing. Like when I was growing up, I never once or never once read a Wolverine comic book or a Spider-Man comic book and wondered to myself, why aren't these people Mexican <laughs> or why aren't these people immigrants or it, it, does that make sense? Like, yeah, it, it, it just, there's this big thing right now where I feel like there is a split people want representation and and then other people that don't it doesn't really matter to them um and i feel that that a lot of i don't know but that's just but that's just me and i again i'm in a in a different generation um that yes i care about people being treated well and of course everyone, everyone has their rights but there's a certain amount, there's a certain time where it's just like, I feel like you can tell when a company, a corporation is being genuine and when they're just trying to make money. I feel that too many people get caught up in the curtain, the current culture. Um, and also it, it, it changes constantly, constantly. And what you think was what what you think was something 
to stand up for one day is no longer what people are standing up for the next day or um, the terms that you're using one year might be okay. And then the next year they're going to be deemed offensive and then, and then back again. And uh, it's, it's very, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's all about the flavor of the month. I feel so like, yeah, Yeah. I feel like that and what I hate to say what's in, but uh, people change, people change. Like, you know, I have watched, friends that were I have one friend uh who I met them I think I was uh, probably in my early to mid 30s and I met them they came to assist me with a project they were probably 19 uh someone sent them to me to be like an intern and man when I first met them they annoyed the crap out of me they had all these thoughts about the world but never seen the world and they just annoyed me but then watching them become their own person and now they're in their mid twenties, it there's a huge drastic change in how they think and they've traveled the world now. So now they're, they have a little bit more experience and it's interesting because then it, and it's only a couple of years difference, but then they're a completely different person. And it's just that like, it is interesting to then be older and watching a younger group of people because then I'm thinking, what was I like that in my twenties and my early twenties? And what, how did I change from those years to now? Um, aside from seeing the world and experiencing a lot of other things, but, uh, and I, and I think about that sometimes there, there, there are times where I, I do certain things or, I'm in the middle of a certain situation and I kind of go, I have really gone off the path that I originally thought I was going to be on. Yeah. Or what my beliefs were. Um, I think my core beliefs have changed over the years and, um, and they have, um, my core beliefs have changed over the years. And sometimes you also have to step back and, certain beliefs are in a gray area and that can be bent. Yeah. Well, things were so much different when I was a kid and my grandparents, I'm not going to lie. My grandparents were prejudiced. Um, But if my grandparents could change, then anybody could change. And you know what? If people change, you need to accept the fact that they change too. They can't go back and change the past. They can just move forward. You know, let me say my my grandparents were very prejudiced. And then I, I mean, I didn't bring any of my friends over. Most of my friends were, you know, I grew up in mostly Hispanic and black neighborhood. There were a few white kids around, but there weren't that many. And uh, so I didn't bring those friends over to my grandparents' house. And then when I got married, my first wife was Hispanic. Anyway, my my grandparents actually accepted her. They loved her. My grandpa even started watching Spanish programs because he wanted to learn Spanish so he could yeah. talk to my wife. You know, my kids being half white, half Hispanic. But yeah. And my grandparents, they they loved them didn't treat them any different. And I, I tell you what, to see my, my grandparents change, they didn't say anything negative anymore. Yeah. But they changed their ways. They moved forward, accept it. They, they changed. They're not the same person. I, you know, I didn't really want to get into a conversation like this, but somehow we just got steered this way. Yeah, no, no, it, it happens. Uh, I, I think I get in this conversation uh, probably once a week with friends because you know, it is, I am like, I'm middle of the road uh, Mm -hmm. when it comes to certain things. But then at the same time, it's like, I I feel like I fall into this weird category where, you know, I grew up in, I grew up both in Texas. I I mean, I moved from Mexico, so Mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant. So I feel very strongly about when people talk badly about the United States, I don't understand it. 
because I'm just like, you know, I came here, you know, very young, but still like I have family in Mexico and it's not saying that the country is like completely horrible, but it's not the greatest place. And I love it here in the U S um, but then I'm also, and then, you know, it's one of those, um, and it's weird because I fall into this, into different categories. So like, maybe that's one of the reasons I'm like, um, I never grew up as a child going, I wish that superhero was like me or <laughs> something because at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm an immigrant from Mexico that identifies as Southern and, <laughs> and, and it, and it, it comes out like if I'm near other people from Georgia, cause I grew up in Georgia or my, my Southern accent will come out and my friends have caught it once or twice and they're like, Oh shit. Um, <laughs> and you know, I grew up, out in the country in the suburbs and the country in Georgia. And it, you know, so then I'm, I'm also, it's this weird, you know, sometimes I forget I'm from another country because I'm over here going, no, I'm Southern, Southern pride. <laughs> um, and you forget. And then like, and then it's, and it's weird because I, I travel up North every now and then for conventions and the way they treat I, certain people, like certain people look at people from the South as like, we're all rednecks mm -hmm. or, or that we're all Republicans. And you could be the most liberal person and go up North and certain people up North will be like, well, you're a Republican. And you're like, what? <laughs> it, it's so crazy. And it's like, but it's also, I've met people from, uh, I was at a, at a hotel staying there because at a photo shoot in town. And just so happened there was a concert for a metal concert, metal, uh, downtown Houston. And people were from all over the U.S. and a couple from all over the world uh, to see this metal concert, this metal festival. And I met this couple from New York. And it was their first time in Texas. And they were like, so um, it's our first time in Texas. And we want to get some barbecue. And I gave them some recommendations. And they go, hey, so how many people downtown actually, like, walk around with their ARs strapped to their back? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and it's, it's the craziest thing. Like, you have this, it, again, I, I don't fall into one specific category. But it is hard to, like, I guess if you don't travel to other states or other parts of your own country or other parts of this world, you're not going to open yourself up to realizing that like, doesn't matter where you're at. People are all kind of going to be the same. There's always going to be some prejudice or some misinformation. Like the fact that people from up North thought that there are people in Texas walking around with their, their AR 57s just kind of uh, walking around. Um, or is it 47? Man, I'm not into guns. I believe that guns, everyone should have a gun. I just don't have any. <laughs> um, but that's the other thing is like, I think that, uh, everyone should, uh, be allowed to have a gun. Uh, do I have one? No. Um, but it's, it's just different things. Like I get, like I said, uh, I get into these conversations with my friends because I do hang out with a lot of friends that are younger and they're part of this newer culture, uh, of inclusivity, um, like I recently had a situation where it's funny because again, you're watching it from a distance, but there was a group of people online and they were talking about inclusivity and how progressive they are and how this, that, and the other, because of, you know, I guess their age. But as soon as drama started, the lines were drawn and there was, there was no, and they defaulted back to, you saw who you, when, when that drama and the, that group started online and you saw the way they're responding, you saw who was a progressive person and who was just acting as such.
because those lines were drawn and they defaulted back to no longer using people's preferred pronouns or, uh, uh, you know, not assuming someone's gender because they were angry. And, and the ones that did, you saw the level-headed ones that did, and you were like, okay, that's a progressive person. That is a person that's always like this. And they're, but then you saw the ones that were just acting that way to be in this group. Um, so it was just interesting to step back and see that. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I do walk around with my 45, so I'll tell you that. Uh. <laughs> I, would, I would like to eventually get a, uh, a gun to conceal carry because there are times where um, I am working late at my workshop and I listen to too much true crime. And so I just, because one of my friends, once I was working really late at night and they were with me and they carry and they're like, you carry? And I'm like, nope. And they're like, and you're out here by yourself sometimes till two in the morning. And I'm like, yep. And they're like, oh man, you get yourself a carry, a concealed carry. I'm like, yeah, probably. What I love about Texas is you don't have to have a license anymore to carry. Yeah. So, yes. I would like something like I, I, I want like that's, that's just crazy. Like on my, on my YouTube algorithm, you've got sci-fi channels, creepy pod, po uh, creepy pasta podcasts, Conan O'Brien comedy. And then like in my algorithm, the occasional like gun video will come up because I subscribe to a couple of weapons channels and they're talking about the latest, like small guns that you can get, or even the large guns you can get. And like the large guns, I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever need that. But the small ones, I'm like, Oh, that's really neat. Cause they, they're compact. They're tiny. And just you know. get you a 22. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fine. I mean, you can still do some damage and take care of yourself. Yeah. No, I've seen, I have a couple friends that have theirs and they've shown them to me and they're like, oh, I keep this one in my pocket. You can't even tell, or I've got this one in my purse or this is not even a phone. And I'm like, nice. But so, yeah. I, I, I find it funny. The people up North who label us Republicans as being these bad people who don't know us at all. No. Um, they don't realize like, how welcoming we really are and how no, loving and, we really and, are. And I think what it is, it's a, it's a picture that's painted about. It's again, it's that like. I have friends that are liberal, but because they're not far left, they are considered Republicans by a couple of people up north, not all, everybody, just a couple. Right, but it's the same thing. Is like not everyone, not everyone in the South is Republican, and not all Republicans are bad. Um, I got into a situation a couple weeks ago where I held a party at my home, and I have mixed group of friends from every walk of life, every walk of life, because I am in every community. Um, and it was the first time I'd had a party in about four years. And I had it and I was a little nervous because since the pandemic, my group, my friends have all changed. Everyone's that kind of scrambled everybody's friend groups. So my new friend groups haven't known me for as long as some of my older friends. Um, and even some of my older friends, you know, things change and people start kids, have families, move. So I think some of my older friends that I've known for about a decade here, um, I invited them out along with my newer friends and some people that have known me kind of in between. And it, it was interesting because it was a maj pot or a melting pot of all ages and all walks of life. And it, some of my friends, like I gave them a heads up, like it was interesting. I had to sit down Give the it's up. sad you have to do that nowadays. Yes. Uh, and I had to give a heads up to both both types of friends. I'm like, hey, just so you know, I do have friends that are Republican and they will be here tonight. And you'll be able to tell who's Republican. Some of them, not all of them, but some of the ones that are, you can tell. And then the same thing with friends that were Republican. I was like, hey, just so you know, I've got friends that are liberal. 
And there's some friends that are really, really liberal and they're coming out tonight. So just, you know, keep that drama outside of my door. And everyone understood it. Um, but it was nice to walk away because a couple of days later, I had friends that did not understand or hang out with a lot of younger liberals. And they were trying to understand it from their point of view. And I found that to be very cool. And then I found out, and then someone that w was very liberal or very woke came up to me and they had connected with my friends, you know, one of my friends that is very Republican because they connected on, cert on, on a certain level. And they were like, that was really cool. I didn't think that I would connect with that person. Um, it, it's just, you know, and that's why it's like, sometimes being middle of the road sucks because then you have to like, you have to, you have to kind of like, and it's really weird because then I have friends that are really, they're left, but they don't believe in guns. And then I have friends that are left that are like, oh no, we all own guns in this house. Are you kidding me? Like these are dangerous times. Um, and the same thing goes for, you know, you meet people that are like, oh no, we're Republicans, but we don't, we don't believe in guns because they're dangerous. But then you also meet Republicans that are like, we love guns. It's, it's just so, I don't know. It's so, nowadays I feel so confused because you have a mixture of everybody. It's just, again, walking on eggshells. Yeah, that's the sad thing about what what I do is you you piss off a certain group of people, then they won't come back. That's all there is yeah. to it. And then when you try to be fair in the middle of the road, they want you to pick a side. And I just I I, I am who I am, and I am, I am who I am because of the way. I, I've lived life. I'm not going to lie. I grew up in a Democrat household. Yeah. And that's, I, I, that's who I thought I was supposed to be. And then I lived certain things through my life and realized that's not who I was. Yeah. But I'm also not so far off to the right that I can't, you know, compromise with someone. Yeah. And I let people on that, or have my views and who don't have my views it would be unfair just to let pe only people on who think the same way i do right. right we don't learn anything from that and the whole point of the show is not only to showcase my my guests but to give some hope to to people out there who feel like there is none there's some kid out there who's trying to get his life started and maybe he loves to to do body paint and prosthetics and stuff like that too but he's scared you know he's seen how things have gotten to be and i've got rudy on here and rudy said you know what yeah i took a hit doing these i'm not able to do these events and stuff but i use my talents to do something else and i'm 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 staying afloat you know mm -hmm. and here's this kid who thinks he's going to give up his dreams well, Rudy, what, what what kind of advice would you give him? Um, you know, if I could go back and talk to myself in my early 20s, um, that is difficult um, because I'm, a, I'm getting back into being very supportive about, of the arts, but again, going circling back around to the pandemic for a little bit, like from 2020 to about 20 middle of 2021, little after 20, little 2021, I was very like, I wouldn't want to wish being an artist on any young person. Wow. That's like, what I it, wanted to be. It, it's a, it's a, it's, it's already difficult as it is, especially now in a day of social media and everything like that. But then it's also, that makes it easier to get your artwork out there. But you know, in a pandemic, it, it you'll lose everything. And I lost everything. Um, but I've softened up again. And now I'm very supportive of, of, of people wanting to be artists. Um, the biggest thing that I would say to a younger artist is um, like skills and practice and like 
that sort of stuff. Like, I mean, you're, you're an artist, you're going to practice and you're going to develop skills and you're going to figure out what it is that you want or you're, and it's going to take time. The biggest thing is like, be patient. You're not going to figure out your style. Someone figures out their style right away. Cool. Good for them. But for yourself, it might take you a couple of years. Like, you know, it took me until mid thirties to figure out that the monster girl thing was what my style is. And that's where I want to go. And it's always evolving. Um, but the biggest thing for a younger artist for me to say is learn to budget, learn finances, learn money, like learn how to money, learn, listen, read, read books, listen to podcasts, but learn how to budget, learn how to, how to save your money, learn how to, uh, price yourself, learn what your value is, learn that is one of the biggest things. Like at the end of the day, aside, anyone can be talented uh, and, and, and a different variety of things. But if you don't know how to, I'm not saying be the greatest business person ever uh, or that you have to be super intelligent, have business degrees, but at least learn how to maintain your finances uh, because like you're not always going to be flush with cash. Some days are going to be a little bit tighter than others. And, but also, so aside from finances, I'm watching a couple squirrels at my window. I'm so sorry. Squirrel. <laughs> I'm looking at them and I'm like, you need to stop doing that. Um, <laughs> um, they're just going around this tree and I'm like, I'm trying to be in a podcast right now. Um, but the other thing is, aside from finances, I think that is a big important thing when it comes to um, younger artists is learning how to finance or learning how to, um, yeah, learning how to budget, learning what things cost, learning uh, what to price yourself out as and learning, um, uh, you know, what you're worth and everything, but also is the job worth it? Um, looking back at some of the things that I used to charge for some of the things that I did back in the beginning. Like I wouldn't even charge that. That's what I charge an hour, let alone the whole project. Um, but the other thing is learn, learn as much as you can. Don't be so snooty that you don't think that you can learn something from another artist or another person. Like, sure, you're going to get cocky or confident, overly confident, but learn, always learn because learning another skill, learning multiple skills is going to help you in the long run. Um, I thought I was going to be a makeup effects artist working out in LA doing, going to school, but that's not what I, that's not what ended up happening. I ended up being in corporate events doing body paint. And then I learned uh, to do more silicone molds, which in the long run helped me start a toy business. And I never, you know, being an artist, I never thought I'd pick up a camera because I was like, eh, it's not for me. I'll have someone else take my pictures for me. But then, you know, I I picked it up and the more I started learning and the better I got, the more that opened up for me, um, like, especially with my series, My Pet Monster Girl. And so, and that added to, to my skill level. So it's learn as much as you can. Don't just stick with, I mean, yeah, your main focus might be one thing, but you want to learn as much on either side of it or other skills like the photography is not part of painting, but by me doing my own photography, I own, I own the rights to my own content. And I, I am taking a picture that I envision, not that someone else thinks is going to look good. Um, so it's those two things is learning how to finance or learning how to learning money, learning how to money and always learn and don't think that you know it all. Um, and then aside from that, just aside from those two things, like patience, patience, because things aren't going to come quickly as much as you want it to. It's not going to happen quick. Um, and then surround yourself with other creatives that are like-minded, um, or even not like-minded. I've, I've met other people that aren't in the same industry I am, I'm in when it comes to art, but asking questions and learning to, learning to just be, um, open to conversing with other people um, and asking them what 
you know, I think I've had conversations with all sorts of artists and getting to know them helps your network because then eventually down the line, they might recommend you for a job or they might um, come to you for something. It, it, it helps to not be afraid to talk to people. Well, I have to say, I wanted to be an artist and I, I would draw, I would do paintings. I'd do stuff with people, you know, I'd get paid a little bit here and there. I really felt weird charging people for doing it. I never felt like I was good enough, but the, the point is, is you do it because you love it. And if it happens to become a career, awesome. I had no idea this is what I was going to end up loving doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I still draw. I still paint. I do it for myself. If you make a living out of it, great. But be prepared. Because sometimes the things we set out to do doesn't always happen. Especially in the world of art. Because yeah. there's a lot of artists out there. I thought, I like I said, I thought I was going to be working uh, Hollywood movies, you know, doing makeup effects on movie stars. And I didn't, you know, not once in my teens or my early 20s think I'm going to be a porn director and I also own a dildo company. <laughs> that was that was the furthest thing from my mind. Like, I, like when I was younger, I wanted to work in the toy industry, designing action figures and transformers, but there was no, I, I didn't know how to get into that industry. So I went into makeup. And so I didn't go, you know, one day, one day I want to design a dildo that everyone wants to buy. No, that's not what I thought was going to happen, but here I am. And it's, it's, it's a cool, cool thing to do. Like, and it's also a conversation starter for sure. Like, Oh, what do you do? And I'm like, Oh, I design uh, adult toys and direct porn. And they're like, nah. -uh. And then I like, you take out a card and you're like, ta-da. And they're like, Oh, Hey, I wanted to work for Marvel comics. So it didn't work that way, but don't, don't give up on your dreams. I'll tell you that right now. Keep working at it. If that's what you really want to do, you keep trying. And if it works, yeah. it works. Yeah. If it works, it works. And you never know shooting for your dream may shooting for one dream that you are may actually lead to something else. Um, I didn't think that I would like a couple of years ago when I started the adult content stuff, I was very timid, very shy about it. And now I'm very like, Oh, this is really cool. Like this is like learning how to shoot all different types of bodies and make it flattering. So people are proud of themselves is cool learning getting to create monsters on my time the way i want it is awesome and then learning new skills of cinematography or videography and 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 photography is awesome is great and i never thought any of that um but shooting for my passion and my dream has led me into new passions and new dreams networking 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 that seems to be the key to anything you really want to do. Correct. So, well, anyway, to end our last conversation, the, the whole reason why my platform is open to just about anybody, unless you're just so far out there, I can't talk to you. Um, uh -huh. It's because we, we have to listen to each other. I, I didn't ask you what your politics were before you came on here. I just know you're a cool guy and, and I, I like you and you saw the flannel you. and you're like, he can go either way. If that flannel says, <laughs> probably smokes uh, or he probably smokes and has a coffee. Or I was like, that flannel goes, this guy shoots guns. But then of course I have a giant unicorn in the background. I'm like, I have an anime, <laughs> an anime shelf over here and a giant unicorn and I'm in a forest. So um. Yeah. <laughs> Magical. This is, you're you right now you're on a porn set. And um this is the this is the fairy garden. Well anyway, uh on that note <laughs> No, we we uh we never know we can learn from each other if we don't take the time time to find oh, out. Absolutely. Like um I know that like um uh it was 
yeah, like uh, I've I've known you now for quite a few years, and What's going on about eight years now. Huh? Yeah, and it's it was through that you know mutual connection, and uh, you know it just kind of all just interweaves. Yeah. So uh, we bring these kind of folks on because uh, we want you to help achieve a dream in your life. Don't give up. I know the way the world seems to be sometimes it, the world's against you. I mean, hell, I go through my times where I'm ready to give up, but I, I find so many cool people out there that help encourage me. And that's what we want to do for you. So, uh, Rudy, where can we find you if we're looking for you on the wonderful world of the web? Um, you can find me, um, different locations so the three uh so for body paint and cosplay and corporate events it's uh rccreationstudio.com um for my monster girl series it's mypetmonstergirl.com and that'll take you all the links that are associated with that series and then for the adult toys it's um yankee doodle dildo co.com <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> no, I can't because it was it was a joke. One of my friends asked me once, like, what would you name the company? And I said something that was as silly as could be. I was like, Yankee Doodle Dildo Co. dot <laughs> com. American company for a new America. And it stuck and it was just so hilarious because it just it sticks with you because then you're like, Yankee Doodle Dildo. That guy's company's named Yankee Doodle Dildo. Um, you know, uh, our, for our international clients that don't want to be offended by Yankees, it's YDDC. <laughs> oh, and uh, what about social media? The so social media, uh, all those, all those website uh, addresses will take you to a list of my social media as well. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, um, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Porn I'm most. Hope. Pornhub, actually, <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, yes. Uh, my pet monster girl has a couple of trailers on Pornhub. Oh my goodness! Um, but uh, I think, which I have not updated in like a year and a half, and I need to because I need money. Um, but the uh, but I'm most active on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All right, we will put those links in the description to to help folks uh, find you easier. Awesome, but, but Rudy, I know you're a busy guy, and I thank you for taking time out of your day. To, no, no, to thank you for having me. Show. I had a lot of fun, and we will do this again in the future. Yes, please, please, uh, uh, sooner than later, because I know it was it's been four years or so. It's, so yeah, it's been a while since we talked. So oh, yeah, it uh, it'll. Uh, it it would be awesome to be on here again. So definitely let me know. It will, we'll do uh, one here in the office next time you're in the Austin area. Oh, I believe that's in uh, two weeks, actually. Oh. Well, how about that? There we go. Well, uh, that would be great. Let's do. Yes, let me know if you need me on the podcast when I'm uh, in town. I'm I'm at a I'm going to be at a monster truck uh, event. It's going to be pretty uh, exciting. I'm pretty stoked. Uh, well, you have to take my grandson. Of course, uh, I'll have to because I hear there's cake and there's going to be hot dogs, and I was guaranteed one beer. Yes, and he absolutely loves Monster Jam. Yes, he's, he's almost three, and he already knows every one of those trucks. And I kid you not, if there's a video of a Monster Jam truck, he can take pop all, and he points at him, and he tells me exactly what it is. Doesn't know all of his colors yet, but he knows each one of those monster trucks. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome well all of you out there if you this is the first time you stop by I, I hope you'll come back in spite of what you saw today uh, <laughs> <laughs> seriously i appreciate that and and please hit that subscribe button for my regulars i thank y'all because you make it possible for me to do this so until the next one everyone please take care be kind to one another and God knows we could use some Jesus right about now, but God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. 
You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network 